Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to LitCode. By writing the login test script using the page of the model concept, I have used this browser.sleep in a couple of places. The reason of using browser.sleep is when we are trying to do the login using this valid credential, like uh, if I show you that, once I click on this login button, you can see that this is going to give us this uh, toast message, welcome Kaushik or maybe welcome user. And if I try to click on the sign out button, of course, it's going to cause us because of the toast message, right? To avoid this situation, we have used this uh, browser.sleep in couple of in couple of places, but that's not a very great idea or very good implementation, I can say. So we are going to get rid of this browser.sleep and we are going to save some amount of time. And also we are going to learn how to use the expected conditions properly. So if I just search this browser.sleep and just go to the search and just type it at, it will give you like wherever we have this particular line. So you can see that we have used this here two seconds and here we have used for five seconds and here also we have used for five seconds. That means totally we have wasted 12 seconds. That sounds like, okay, nothing wrong about 12 seconds only, right? But consider your testing suite where you have like around 102 or maybe more than that test cases of course the number of test cases into this seconds it's of course is a huge impact right so we can at least save some of the time by using proper weights and by just neglecting this browser.sleep so let us see how to do that before that if i just try to command all this browser.sleep and if i try to execute the script let us see what it's going to happen of course, it's going to fail. We already knew about this, but just to uh, make sure that you are you have synced with my tutorial and you are following the playlist, I just wanted to show you this, right? So I'm just going to execute. Let us see what it's going to happen. Two thousand years later. Okay, so here we have three specs and three failures. Of course, all the test script got failure. And the reason here is we can see that it says that uh, that email ID is not found because of course we it didn't uh, click on the sign out. So the email is not going to appear anyway. And then uh, some link text is not found. Again, the same exception. So nothing much here, right? So instead of browser.sleep, I'm going to use the expected condition. So let us see that. I think we no need to use anywhere else. We have problem with this valid toast alone. So within this function, I'm just going to introduce the expected condition here. And as usual, the first we'll create an object. So let is equal to browser dot expected condition. And then we have to just say why we have to wait. So wait and then followed by browser dot wait, not this one. So browser dot wait and within the wait, we have to specify two arguments. One is what is the expected condition and another one is the time. So here we are going to take the maximum time as maybe uh, 10 seconds. So like, let's say that max time equal to 10,000. So 10,000 doesn't 10 seconds. And we know that it's of course not going to take the whole 10 seconds. As soon as there is an element, it is just going to perform the action and it's going to continue with the next line of code, right? So here we will say like expected condition and my condition here is to visibly, visibility of, right? So I'm just going to wait until the element is going to be visible. So here we'll say, what is the element? So this dot toast. And then we have to specify the time. So we'll just call this variable. And similarly, we have to wait until this element is going to be invisible, right? So here again, we'll say like a wait, then browser dot wait. And the condition is now very simple, invisibility of, and we'll pass the element as this dot toast. And then we'll just pass the max time as an argument. Now let's try to run this and check or confirm that it's going to work for sure. And that's it, cool. So we are now able to see that three specs without any failure. This works fine and of course it's going to work we understand how this expected conditions works but there is a problem in this problem in the sense not from the expected condition from the jasmine what happens when we are trying to wait for an element and if the element is going to take much time to solve the expected conditions 
then at that point you might face like issues like jasmine default timeout exception the reason is in jasmine we have the default timeout of 5 seconds so each and every it blocks it is expected to pass within the 5 seconds or else jasmine will throw you an error saying that hey timeout error exception um so so the solution is very simple you just have to go to your conf.js and you have to add this couple of lines here jasmine node option and here i'm trying to say that default timeout interval of 60000 that means i'm waiting for i'm giving time for about 1 minutes for each and every specs every it blocks so make sure you are also adding this in your conf.js in my scenario it is not necessary because uh, the application whatever the application let code you are seeing now it's in my local machine but in your project of course the server side rendering will be there there will be large or huge data there will be huge data coming from your server side and that time of course we have to wait maybe for another 15 or 20 seconds at that point of course you have to use this line or else if you are going to face some issues okay if you have any issues like that like that just do let me know in the comments i'll be happy to uh, clarify that if it's something within my hand and i think that's it we have learned this expected condition so here the two functions very easy visibility of and invisibility of and uh, that's it so see you in the next one very soon if you have any queries please do let me know in the comments thanks for watching see you in the next one very soon